How to use ZX with Jenkins. A lot of times when you're working with Jenkins, you might need to write some shell scripts, whether that's a bash script or a PowerShell script. Sometimes you might even go a little bit further and write a Python script or even a Perl script. But what if you're a JavaScript developer? Wouldn't it be nice to be able to write your scripts using JavaScript? ZX gives us that ability. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.387.3. I also have a sample repository for this video. The link to that repository is down in the description. So if you've never taken a look at ZX before, let's take a look at it. And in its description, it says, Bash is great, but when it comes to writing more complex scripts, many people prefer a more convenient programming language and JavaScript is a perfect choice. So in order to use ZX, you have to install ZX, but before you can install ZX, you need at least Node 16. So on my agent that's attached to my controller, I've installed Node and then I've installed ZX. So let's go take a look at the sample repository. What I've done is I've created a Jenkins file at the root and I've also created a scripts folder. So we'll take a look at scripts. Notice that I have named it hello.mjs. If we go back over to the ZX site, what we'll see here is that we have a choice. You can write your scripts in a file with a .mjs extension in order to be able to use await at the top level. If you prefer JS, then you just need to wrap your scripts. So in order to not wrap the script, I named my file with a .mjs extension. So going back to that, what we can see here is very first line, I have a shebang pointing at ZX. And then from that point forward, I'm just writing standard JavaScript. So in this case, I'm pulling in message from the command line. Then if for some reason that variable is undefined, I'm just defaulting it to world. So when we get down to line seven, we're just doing a console log of hello and then whatever the value of message is. Now let's go take a look at our Jenkins file. So for our Jenkins file, what we have, very first stage I have is I'm checking for ZX version. So before I try to run anything else, I make sure that I have ZX there and version is just a simple parameter I can pass without having to exercise anything else. Is ZX there and do I have a version? If the answer is yes, then I'm pretty sure that everything else is going to work out okay. So in the second stage, I'm just running the script from the full path. So in this case, I'm saying sh.scripts and then hello mjs. So fully qualifying down to where my script actually is living in the directory. The next stage, I'm during into the scripts directory and then just running dot hello mjs. Next, again, same thing. I'm during into the scripts directory, but this time I'm specifying zx. Since I already have the shebang in there, it knows to use jx here, but I can also explicitly call jx and then run the script. And then finally, again, using dir, I'm going to pass in that parameter to change our output. So let's go ahead and go back over to our Jenkins controller. I've already run the job once for this case. If we take a look at the output, what we see is we see ZX version. In this case, it's 7.2.2. I have my hello world, which again, going back and taking a look at our hello MJS file is since we didn't pass in anything to our hello MJS, it's going to default to world and output world, which is what we see here when we run our fully qualified example. The next one, we're CDing into our directory, that's our dir here, and then running dot hello MJS. Next, again, going into dir and explicitly stating ZX and then running it, again, we get hello world. And then finally, we pass in the parameter to our MJS file, galaxy, and then our output is hello galaxy. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.